This conference will now be recorded.
Hello, uh, Lalit, can you hear us? Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, we can get started, Lalit. Sorry, sorry for the delay. We can get it's started. Okay. All right. So, in our last session, we have seen the EC2 part, the computing part. We have seen the various <laughs> concepts in EC2, launching of a Windows machine, Linux machine, then what is auto scaling, load balancer. Then there are various types of different concepts we have seen in the computing power, EMIs, EC2, and a lot of things. So that was about computing part. Today we will more focus on the networking part. I will see actually the VPC. All right. So let's start our session. So before we go ahead, now we will see some basics of the networking, which is very important to, uh, to go before we go to the VPC section because VPC is uh, totally on the IP range and how you do subnetting. Are you guys aware of this VPC subnetting mask and everything? No. Any background from networking part? Hello? No, we have some basic knowledge. But not All right. everyone. No. All right. So here we'll see some basics like the IP, the more the focus we will on the IP part. So basically there are two types of IP internet protocol, IP version four and IP version six. IP version four is 32 bit long and IP version six is 128 bit long. So these are the examples of IP version four and six. Now, when we consider the IP version four, this is 32 bit long, which is divided into four parts, like 2.255.0.38. Now, this is something that we can understand 2.225.0.38, but computer cannot read it. And whenever there is a communication between sender and receiver, this IP address is get transformed into its a binary format. So this is the way all uh, the represent representation of uh, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. The entire section, the entire segment is eight contains eight bits. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, that's 32. Alright, yeah. so 2.255.0.8 is represented like this. Yeah. 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 Uh, your voice is breaking out. Are you saying something? No, no nothing. Okay. Alright, so let's take a first example. 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Now, when we talk about the VPC, a VPC range always starts from slash 16, the minimum, the maximum one, and the minimum goes slash 28. Now, slash 16 and slash 28 is called a subnet mask. How you want to distribute your network and what is the range of your distribution? So, 10.0.0.0 slash 16 means starting 8 plus 8, that is 2 bit remains constant this 10.0 remains a constant starting 8 plus 8 16 bit and now what we have is the dynamic changing 8 bits from 00 to 255 255 so when we take this example of vpc 10.0.0.0 16 your ip range will start from 10.0.0.0 slash 16 to 10.0.225 to 225. Any range of number from this two digit 0.225 can be there. This is dynamically generated IP range. So 0, .0 to 0 0.225, then 1.1 dot to 1.225. If you see all these com combinations different, then you will find 65,535 different IP range. That is the maximum you can allocate on a AWS VPC. So when I take this example of my VPC range 10.0.0.0/16, the maximum IP address I can allocate in my infrastructure is 65,535. And out of this, 10.0 will remain constant throughout my network. 
so that's 16. Then let's take a consideration of slash 24. When you see this slash 24, 8 plus 8 plus 8, 3 bits remains constant and the remaining re uh, is only the last bit. So here the changes will be done only on the last bit from 0 to 25. So the maximum possibility you have is only 256. When you consider, when you take an example of slash 24, then only you can take uh, 256 different IP range from your system. Here 10.0.0 .0 always remains constant in your IP range. Now, you can take from 10.0.0.0.16 to 10.0.0.28. So 16 comes here, which gives you 65,565 different IP address. When you say 17, so from here to here, the starting number of bits will remain constant. And your IP range will start from here to here. So in this way, the VPC is selected and then you can divide this VPC, the entire 65,000 VPC into small groups called as subnet. You can go with 18, 19, 20, whatever it is. Till here, it becomes constant and the only the remaining part will keep changing. Are you getting this case? This is very important. This is basic. Let's take a third example. 10.0.0.0 slash 28 which is like a, the minimum number of VPC range that you can allocate in your system. So in this slash 28, the starting three digits, that is 10.0.0 .0 and the four last bit of this zero are also remains constant. Not only you have a slash 28, that is slash only last four bits. So this 0, .0 to 0 0.0 will remain only dynamic so in this case you will get only 16 different ip address all right is it okay can we move forward hello uh, yes Lali. all right so this is the basic now when you have 65000 different vpc range the maximum that you can allocate and now when we consider a very huge infrastructure, uh, infrastructure like Apple or Netflix or, uh, you know, giant companies. So of course, at that time, 65,000 IP address is a very small range of IP address. At that time, I don't think so this kind of VPC can be helpful to them. So what do you think how they, you know, uh, how they design their infrastructure to make sure they have sufficient number of uh, IP They will use IP6, I think. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I asked a question that is like uh, uh, normally a VPC gives you 65,535 different IP range. Let's consider I have one, I'm running a giant, you know, infrastructure for a large company which requires more than 65,000 IP address. So in that case, what we can do and how we can design our infrastructure. Is normally for a giant infrastructure like Apple, Microsoft, Google, they will require a uh, thousands of lakhs of IP address. So in that case, how you can design this infrastructure? Now this can be a very good example in the exam. This kind of questions are asked, asked in many times in exam. It create different VLAN and the queue. Sorry, one second. It can create different VLAN and queue. 
you can create different vlan what is vlan vlan virtual lan uh, how is going to help you so each company we can make different different subnets okay of course yeah uh, subnet is a different part subnet is always a part of your vpc now when we have this 10.0.0.0/28 we have now 16 different ip address i can create a group of 16 different subnets with each one ip address or when i have 65000 different ip range i can distribute into multiple subnets that's not a question the complete entire range of vpc is 65000 i need more than 65000 then in that case how we can use can we use slash 8 no the minimum is slash 16 and maximum you can go with slash 20 okay how about creating two vpc and then joining together yes yes correct yeah so aws support that feature is called as vpc peering through this vpc peering you can connect two different or multiple different vpcs and create a giant infrastructure now aws supports vpc peering within the region across the region or across the different aws account so i can connect my vpc in my aws account to your vpc in your aws account in any region you want so that features is possible and it will treat like a uh, you have a common vpc range now when we divide our vpc into multiple subnet in every subnet when we create aws reserve five ip address for this internal purpose that's always mandatory aws always reserve five ip address in every subnet the starting four ip address and the last ip address so let's say this 10.0.0.0/28 is our subnet all right so starting from 0.0 to 0.3 and last 0.255 this five ip address will be always reserved for its internal purposes for registering your subnet for routing purposes and everything you are not eligible to use this five ip address and the rest of the things you can use it whenever you want let's jump to the vpc part uh if you have question let me know because your voice is coming a lot so i'm just muting you all right So Amazon VPC enables you to launch AWS resources in virtual network that you have defined. Uh, whatever the network that you have defined, it uh, lets you to create an infrastructure for you, the uh, EC2 machines, the uh, lambdas, the uh, RDS machines, etc. And these are the basically private IP. Whenever we are talk about the VPC, we are actually reserving our private IPs. This virtual network closely resembles a traditional network. that you have operated in your own data center so just like your own data centers how you create your infrastructure how you connect to, to your resources similarly this vpc act accordingly now what vpc does is it reserves the range of private ip address for you it never reserves public ip it always reserves the private ip vpcs are region specific just like your ec2 you need to first select a region in which you want to create your infrastructure and then you can create your vpcs now the default limit of creating per region vpc in your account is 5 if you require more than 5 vpc then you need to raise again support ticket and increase the limit but the default limit is always 5 now two vpcs can have an overlapping ip address which means uh if i have vpc call as 10000/16 is called as vpc a then i can create a vpc b with the same ip range that's acceptable but if you are trying to peer this both the vpcs that is if you are trying to create a giant network at that time this will conflict and aws vpc peering doesn't support that future so you can create an overlapping ip address but you cannot use that vpcs to create or to join that these two vpcs that's the only condition traffic to the vpc is maintained by the route table 
just like similar in our on-premise infrastructure we have routers similarly in our vpc in our aws we have core as route tables and this route table you can define all the rules how and when you want to uh, route the traffic from where to where you can define everything then coming to the security part security to the vpcs are provided by security groups and nickel now these are the two different securities security group we have already seen which act at the instance level now the second is a nickel that is network access control list this network access control list is act on a subnet level so if you have 10 ec2 instance in a single subnet and something that you want to restrict on all the ec2 machine then you can create a rule and apply on the nickel so all the ec2 instance under that subnet will take effect let's say on a security group you have opened the port 80 which is under a particular subnet now on this submit if i create a nickel rule and say deny all the 80 ports then your ec2 instance will not be able to have communication on port 80. so nickel rule always act at a subnet level and security group act at a instance level we have this in the future slides let's talk about the first uh, subnet a subnet is basically a logical grouping of ip address in a vpc so whatever the vpc you have you can distribute this vpc range into small chunks the chunks are nothing but called as subnet just take an example of your home your entire home is your vpc and then your home is divided into multiple rooms so these rooms are nothing but a subnets all right now let's say you have taken an internet connection in your home so when this lease line provider when they provide the internet connection to your service to your home they brought a dedicated link to your home so it is called as internet gateway that is the wire that comes to your home is called as internet gateway so what you do once as a wire comes to your home you connect that wire to a router so similarly we will connect that internet gateway to our route table okay and now once it is into the route table or in the router then here you can define in which room of your home you want to give internet connection let's say in your home you have five rooms all right and then you have internet connection and then you have a router now when this internet connection is connected to the router now you can define out of these five rooms in which rooms you want to have internet connection and in which room you don't want to have internet connection all right now the reason behind it when you have internet connection in one of the room that room becomes public that is you can have internet access in that room and you can communicate to anyone you want but the room which do not have internet connection is a private room you do not have any any access to you know uh, you don't have any access to the internet you cannot download any packages you cannot upload any packages you are out of internet service so that's the thing behind public submit and private submit now consider your home is your vpc and you have five rooms that is five subnets so when you have internet gateway which is connected to the router in this router you can define which subnet do you want to have internet connection and which do not when you connect a subnet or when you yeah when you connect a subnet to an internet gateway that subnet is called as public subnet and when the subnet is not connected and when the subnet is not connected to the internet that becomes private subnet all right hello can you hear me guys are you getting this yes yes 
okay so this is the concept behind public and private now we say there are two types of summary that is what we have discussed public and private when you have internet connection you become public and you do not have internet connection it becomes private instances inside a private instance or oh, sorry instances inside a private software cannot have direct access to the internet so whenever you launch a ec2 machine inside a private subnet you cannot have internet access but when you have created a ec2 instance in a public subnet you then have an internet connection by default whenever you create a subnet it's a private you manually make it public that is you connect an internet gateway and then you make it public public subnets can be moved to the private and vice versa that is whenever you attach an internet connection it becomes public when you detach it becomes private so this is something that you can do whenever you want any instance launch in a vpc has to be inside a subnet so whenever you launch a ec2 machine it needs to be under under a vpc and then under the vpc it needs to be inside a particular sub that is mandated part we have seen this in our ec2 section now before moving ahead can you guys tell me when we should go for a public subnet and when we should go for a private subnet for what application you think public is good and for what applications we can go with a private because public will have an internet connection and private will not have an internet connection So email server we can use public like this. Uh, sorry, one second. Your voice is just fainting. Very uh, breaking out. For email email server we can have a public uh, IP. For other application, if, if they if we want to access through internet, then we can make it as a public. Okay. So basically, as per the AWS best practices and well architecture framework. The entire infrastructure should be in the private subnet or the private EC2 machine. You should not have a public IP on your EC2 machine and it should not be exposed to the internet. So in that case, how we can download the servers, how we can download the packages and all the things. It becomes very difficult, correct? Because the well architecture framework says that you should have the entire infrastructure in private you should not expose to the public so what in that case how we can connect that thing and how we can download the packages and why a private subnet and a private ec2 machine is recommended we'll see in our lab session to understand this part whenever you have a private instance you do not have any public ip associated to that ec2 machine which means anyone on the internet or you or me when you want to connect to that machine via ssh you cannot do that because the public ip is not exposed you cannot connect to via private ip so technically you cannot ssh to that ec2 machine that's the first reason why you should not go for a private uh, public ec2 machine so when we talk about the hackers or the person who is trying to penetrate your system cannot just directly enter to your system so for them it becomes a very good strategy second thing when you have infrastructure in private mode that private ec2 machine as it doesn't have internet connection so that ec2 machine if a hacker try to write any script and uh, try to upload some data to its own server which means if a hacker is trying to pull any data from that server it won't be successful because that ec2 machine do not have internet connection so the data cannot be pulled directly not even a data can be pushed directly to that ec2 machine so all the inbounds and outbound over the internet is denied so it becomes a very good strategy from security point of view so of course now we understood that from the hacker perspective when we are from penetration perspective when a hacker is trying to enter your infrastructure it becomes very important to have a private secure infrastructure but what about us if you want to connect to this machine if you want to configure this machine 
how we will do that so that we'll see in our lab section how we can do all these things how to connect and everything now the second concept is route table that is our router a route table contains a set of rules called as route whatever the number of routes you want to define what is the number of rules that you define is called as routes and you can have n number of routes in each of this route table each subnet in your VPC must be associated with a route table. So if you have 10 subnets, 20 subnets, hundreds of subnets, each subnet must be associated to a route table to define a particular purpose of uh, having a inbound and outbound transaction. Whenever you create a VPC, a default route table is been automatically created. This default route table table is already associated to all the subnets that you want to create in future now you can also create your own custom route table as many as you want there is no such condition restriction you can create a number of route tables and you can have separate communication on all these route tables vpc automatically comes with a main route table so while the one that i've told you the default route table is called as main route table that you cannot delete it that you can only modify a main route table can be replaced with a custom route table that is the one that you can manually create you can replace the main route table with the newly created custom route table every route table contains a local route now this is very important local route this local route defines the internal communication between your vpc to understand this part Let's say there are two computers in your lab. Okay, these two computers are connected via a LAN cable or via a router to both the computers. You do not have internet connection to this router. This router, this router is just connected to the LAN, and LAN is just delivering the content or transporting the content from one computer to another computer. Of course, that is possible with a router or a direct LAN cable, you can transfer the data from one computer to another computer. That is possible when you have two computers uh, in the same place or when these two computers are connected together via a dedicated link. So the same features is been provided by this local route. This local route defines the range of your VPC. So for example, if you have a VPC range of 10, 0.0.0.0 slash 16 so in this local route this vpc range will be available which you cannot delete which you cannot modify this defines that any communication between one computer to another computer within the same vpc is allowed any transmission of data any uh, you know backend transmission within the same vpc is allowed this is called as local route. Then we have Cicada, which we have already seen in our EC2 section. That it acts as a virtual firewall for your instances to control your inbound and outbound traffic. Then you can attach five Cicada cubes to a single EC2 machine at the same time. The maximum limit is five. Security group at, at an instance level. You can only associate security group at an instance level, not at the subnet level. Rules in the security group define inbound and outbound traffic control. So whatever the inbound and outbound traffic that you want to control, you can define in the rules section of the security group. Rules define the port to be allowed and by default all ports are denied. So this is the features provided by the security group that all ports are by default denied and we specifically allow which port we want to have communication like ssh http rdp or whatever the communication that we want to have we define a specific port and the specific source from where we are getting this request so this is all feature that we provide on our security group option to have separate and inbound and outbound traffic now, there are a lot of applications uh, mostly when you are dealing with the network based application 
there are a lot of things that you need to have communication on different different fours that is like you take uh, inbound you take an input on a specific port and you give output on another port like uh, you are taking an input on port 91 from your uh, client from your customers and then you are delivering your content to your customers on port 92 maybe or for your own infrastructure you are using 92 port so you can have separate inbound and outbound transmission security groups are stateful that is when you have inbound and outbound traffic which you can specifically define and which only allows you to have only allow rules not the deny rules that means it's a stateful second security feature is NACL network access control list so this is an optional level that is if you want to enable this feature then you can uh, otherwise uh, it's not mandatory to always include this NACL rule it again acts as a firewall, but now this is at the subnet level. The one that we just talked about, the security curve, is act at a uh, at the instance layer, but now this act at a subnet layer. You can associate a network access control list with multiple subnets. However, a subnet can be associated with only one network access control list at a scene. Just a common scenario. A single subnet will be associated on a single network access control list only. Now, in this network access control list, you can define multiple range of IP address. So, how it works? Here, you need to define the number rules. So whenever you see a NACL rule, there will be one star mark. There will be a, there will be one star asterisk which defines allow all the ports. Nee, sorry, uh, this will deny all. And on top of this, there will be thousand rule which define allow all ports now here you need to maintain this number system the least number will get the highest priority now let's say at number 100 i have defined allow 80 port then on number 80 i have denied 80 port so now the, the, the list number will be getting highest priority so my 80 port will be denied to all the ec2 instances under that subnet but again on let's say on port on root 70 i have allowed again 80 so again the list number will get the highest priority and the 80 port will be unable so here you need to define this number system and the list number will get the highest priority. This is network access control list. It contains a number system, number list of rules that will evaluate in order. Starting with the lowest number rule to determine whether the traffic is in or out of any subway associated with the network access control list. So based on this number list, the list number will get the highest priority. It again has a separate inbound and uh, outbound rules. Now, the difference between a security group and a network access control list is on a security group, you can only allow the rules. By default, all the ports are denied. You only specifically need to mention the allow rules. But on the network access control list, you can either have an allow rule or a deny rule. You can define both the things allow and deny. All right. Any questions any doubt so far? Uh, no, not really. All right. And these are stateless as you can define the allow and deny rule. This becomes stateless so that you can easily control all your inbound and outbound traffic. Now the concept comes here is internet gateway. That is your internet connection in the entire VPC.
Now, Internet Gateway is a horizontally scale, redundant, and highly available VPC component that allows communication between instances in your VPC and the Internet. So, this Internet Gateway is a gateway through which you can have communication on any instances on the Internet. Whatever the Apache server that you want to download, or MySQL server, or any packages that you want to install or update, you always need an internet connection. So that internet connection is now provided by the internet gateway. This internet gateway is an Amazon managed services. You don't need to do any configuration. You don't need to do anything. You just need to create this internet gateway and plug to the router. That's it. Now on this part, I have a question. I have very giant VPC, a VPC with 65,000 IP address. All right. And in this 65,000 IP address, I am running thousands of EC2 machines. These EC2 machines are having a very high load on the network side. Maybe it's a gaming side. Let's consider this is a gaming side which requires a lot of internet uh, you know bandwidth to have a communication so when i have hundreds of or thousands of ec2 machine running in my system which is continuously taking a lot of internet bandwidth so they will be definitely lag in the internet connectivity so what in that case what we can do to upgrade this internet capacity to a higher version or just in short i want to update the size of my internet capacity maybe correctly uh, usually internet gateway gives you 5 gb or 10 gbps of bandwidth now we require 20 gbps of bandwidth so in that case what do you think could be a good option to increase the size of the internet bandwidth Yes. Multiple, multiple gateways failure. Now, the first condition of the VPC is to a single VPC, you can associate only one internet gateway. There's no way that you can associate two, three internet gateways. And this is a very good exam question in your exam. This question has asked a lot of times in exam. Uh, there will be a scenario like uh, but uh, there's a company XYZ who is running out of this bandwidth capacity of the internet. And uh, what what do you recommend to, uh, you know, increase the size of the internet capacity? So there will be option like to attach multiple internet gateway. So you should not select that option. You cannot associate more than one internet gateway to a single VPC. So in that case, how will you increase the size? Hello. 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 Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes. Yes. All right. So, what is the answer? 
so in that case how we can uh, you know increase the size of the bandwidth this is a very common question and this is a very common you know thing in when designing infrastructure on the cloud so just before a minute we have seen a concept called vpc peering that is you can create two different vpc to create a giant infrastructure correct yes. more than 65000 ip address you want now when you have one only vpc which has a very huge load that requires more internet capacity more internet bandwidth capacity then you can distribute this load into multiple vpc because we know that only one vpc will have only one internet gateway so now what we can do is we can distribute this vpc into multiple vpcs and then we connect it together so that it becomes a single you know giant infrastructure and when you have multiple vpc it means you have multiple internet gateway let's suppose i have thousands uh, ec2 machine i can divide this thousand ec2 machine into multiple servers into multiple vpcs so when i have multiple vpcs it is connected to multiple internet gateway so in that way we can increase the internet bandwidth capacity all right so whatever the questions you have in your exam in the, the way that the question is designed you should select such kind of answer that will give this kind of option to distribute the network into multiple vpc so that every vpc will have a separate internet gateway and then in that way you can increase the size of the internet capacity all right okay now the internet gateway is we have already seen that whenever you connect internet gateway to a subnet that subnet becomes public but when you do not connect internet gateway it becomes private which means all the ec2 instances in that private subnet will not have any internet capacity internet connectivity but the ec2 instances who is connected to the internet gateway can have communication on the internet so all these things connecting to the internet and not connecting to the internet is done at the route table and the second concept here is called to perform a network address translation now this is a very common service uh, which will filter your public internet to the private we'll see uh, there is a separate session available we'll see this net part in detail So there is a very small limit overview that is number of vpcs per region that you can create in your aws account is five this is something that is you don't need to remember from exam point of view but just as a solution at care this is very important to remember the things whenever you are dealing with your customers with your clients at that time with this knowledge you can design your infrastructure and also tell them the conditions and the restrictions part here so just for the information purpose you can keep remember vpcs per region is 5 subnets in each of these vpcs can be maximum up to 200 elastic ip per region 5 these are the uh, you know uh, when the ppt were designed at the time this was the limit overview now maybe this limit has been changed somewhere up and down so that's not a problem internet gateway per region that is 5 again as you have five vpcs per region so you have internet gateway per region is also five network uh, net gateway that is network address translation we will see uh, later on this what is this concept per average zone is five virtual private gateway that is if you want to connect your vpc with another cloud service maybe google or azure you can use this virtual private gateway to connect to that vpc or if you have a infrastructure on premise and again you have infrastructure on cloud if you want to connect these two infrastructures together then again you can use this virtual private gateway which also offer, offers you five gateways you can create per region then you have knuckle per regions knuckle rules that is 200 per uh, per regions you can create and each of this knuckle rule you can have rules 20 in each of this NACL. That is, in each of this NACL rules, you can have maximum to 20 rules. Route table in each of these VPCs, you can create a maximum up to 200. 
and in each of these route tables you can have a routes of maximum up to 50. Then you have security groups per region you have 2500 security groups you can create and each of these route security groups you can have 60 different rules in each of the security group and then we have vpc peering connection that is connected to different vpcs that you can do 50 from one vpc to another vpc this number of in your aws account just to limit overview uh, maybe some of the services is got upgraded to a higher version but most of these are same so that is vpc Hello, Lalit. One minute. Yeah. Like, if you want to like uh, establish a communication between two VPCs from two different regions, how yeah. will you work out? Okay, we'll see that part into lab session. On the AWS VPC pairing service, there is a dire option available. Do you want to connect to this region or to another region? So the dire option is available. Okay. We'll see that in detail. So you guys have AWS account, right? You tried last time everything. Hello, am I correct? You guys have an yeah, AWS account? Yeah. I'm logged in. Yes, okay. So I also logged in. And currently I'm in North Virginia. You can choose whatever regions you want. I'm in North Virginia. And from the services, I can select the VPC. Now, this is my VPC dashboard. That is the number of VPCs you have, number of subnets you have, route tables, and etc. It will just give you a small description. Now, it says I have one VPC here. And even if you log into your AWS account, you will find there is a one VPC available. This VPC is nothing but the default VPC. And you will find the same CID range here 172.31.0.0 slash system. This is the same default thing. Again, if you go to the subnets, you will find the default subnets here. Now, Let's just start with creation of a VPC. What we need to do is click on create VPC. Give a name. Let's call it VPC hyphen 01 underscore 01. And now we need to give a CID range. Can you guys tell me any CID range? The one that we have just discussed in our PPT, the first thing. Or let's let me just show you one example 192 168 0.0 slash 16. From here also you can see a CID block cannot be greater than slash 16. It needs to be you can have maximum up to slash 16 and the minimum slash 28. So do you want to associate IP version 6 or not? If you want, then Amazon will deserve IP version 6 also or not. Then we have a tenancy. That is, do you want to create a, this VPC with the shared resources on the AWS? That is, the same resource will be shared. Same hardware will be shared between multiple AWS customers. Or do you want it to be dedicated? Whatever it is, you can select one of them. And then you can click on create. Close. So 192 168 000 VPC has been successfully created. Now, whenever you create a VPC, at the same time, few things got automatically created. A network access control list. Here you can see this is a network access control list which is automatically got created. A DSCP option set which is automatically again got created. A route table, and then a security group will be always created. This is a security group which is automatically created when you have created a VPC. The VPC ID is 048C. You can see here 048C. 
and the same one the one that we have just created 048c so whenever you create a vpc four things got automatically created a network access control list a dsp option set a route table and a security group now the first step is to create a vpc second step click on the internet gateway and then click on create a internet gateway so here we will create one internet gateway let's say igw10 for our vpc 01 so that we can easily identify for to which vpc it is connected create so internet gateway is created but the status is still detached so what we need to do is we need to click on action attach to vpc and here we will select the vpc on which we want to connect so here i select our vpc one that one that we have just created and then click on attach so now the vpc uh, the you know the internet connection is just uh, the wire of the internet connection is just connected to your home what we need to do is to route the data we need to have a route table but where we will do this routing to our subnets correct so before going ahead we need to first create our subnets so clicking on the subnet now these are the all default subnets here you can see the these vpcs are the default vpcs 172 31 the different range of IP address. Let's create our subnets. Let me just give you subnet 01 in our VPC 01. And these are the different ability zone. In which ability zone you want to create the subnet, it totally depends on you. Let me just create in US East 1A. Now, can you give me any CID range for this? For our subnet? Subnet CID range. Yes. 192. 168. Correct. 06 06 198 So I am not. I don't think so. The VPC part is yet clear. So let's just have a small look into this. We have a VPC called as 192.168.0.0/16, correct? Which will give you approximately 65,000 IP range. Now, what is our job? Is to distribute this entire 65,000 IP range into small, small groups, into small, small subnets so that we can have a separate way of communication like two submits for front end two submits for another application two submits for database etc likewise so here we go with our first subnet subnet 1 and 192 168 now 192 168 definitely will remain constant because we have 16 192 160 remains constant now comes the third part. So if I say again 0.0 slash 24, so what will happen? This three digits becomes constant. Now we have only changing bit from 0 to 255. So in that case, you will get only 256 IP range. So we have a subnet one with maximum of 256 IP address. Let's create another one sixty eight. Now we know 
that 0.0, .0 to 0.255, the entire range is consumed. Correct? Now we cannot have 0.0 .0 again, 0.0. So we need to start from 1.0. Now our IP will start from 1.0. Now let's say I want to give 17. Can I give it? Uh, yes. So what will happen when I say 17? Approximately 32,000 IP address will be reserved. So now you need to calculate from 1 to 32,000. 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 till 32,000 IP address get completely reserved. The place where it got completely reserved from next onwards, you can have subnet 3. So how will you identify the where it stops? So basically, there are a lot of calculators available. You can also go with that. So how uh, will this is? is so we, we we need to have slash uh where we have slash 17 17 will reserve 32000 ip address so that means You can give 130 and 130? Mm. Uh, which 1.0 slash we have mentioned 70. So it should start from now 128. So we can go with 129. Okay. So from 1.0 to 192.168.0. 128.0. The entire range is being consumed. Can you see this? From 1 to 128.0. 127.255. The entire range is consumed by this 17 range, which will offer you approximately 32,000 IP addresses. So, what is the range for by subnet 3? Yes, for the submit team, when we can, from where we can start? 129. 129. 129.0. Uh, then, submit mask. Uh, uh, can we use 17 again? 17. Yes. Is it possible? Yes. How? When you have, have when you have 16, 65,000 IP address is quality consumed. When you have 17, that is half of the 65, 32,500 and something IP address is already consumed. So when you have 217, 17, it means the entire 65 is consumed. So we have 17 here, we have 256 here. If I say here again 17, this will conflict. It will not have the number of IP address in the system. You have to use seven. See here, thirty-two seven six six. That is thirty-two seven six six plus two fifty-six. This is all total we have already consumed. Of course, sixty-five thousand. It is 33022 minus 65535. Now you have only 32513. 32513, which means you cannot go with 
slash 17. So for the submit fee, which you can go. Now just have a look. When you say slash 18, slash 18 means the starting two digit becomes one. Correct. Here from here to here, the 16 is consumed. Then here comes the 17 and it comes the 18. So one one it becomes one one and then you have six zero So one one and six zero four five six If I convert this part into a decimal it says 192 Correct so from 192 you can start um, Sorry It gives you 63. So 129 plus 63. When you say slash 18, so from 192 plus 63, the number of IP address will be resolved. Now 63 into 256 will be 16,000 IP range. So you can go with 18, you can go with 19, you can go with 20, 21, 22, 23, till 28. You need to understand, you need to you just have now 32 IP address in your system out of the 65 32,000 here you have already reserved 32766 and here you have reserved 256 so out of this 65,000 this number of IP address is already consumed the remaining is 32 now it totally up to you how you need to distribute this let's say again I want to go with the only 24 to 56 different IP address. I can say 24 again, which will give me 256 again. Now here the remaining is 256. That is whatever the number will be. The remaining will be here. I can have three subnets in three different average zone with this number of capacity. If my application requires 32 different IP address or my entire application is very big, so I can put into the subnet too. I can have 32 different IP address. For my small application, I can have only 256 IP address and I have small infrastructure for that. This is not easy. You need to do practice. Let's take an example. Can you give me now one VPC range? Hello? Any VPC range apart from 10 000 and 192 160 000. 192. Okay. 169. 00. 00. Slash. Slash 16, right? Slash 16. 16. Okay. Now I want sub. I need uh, six subnet. One, two, three, okay. So definitely for all the six subnet, 192, 169 will be common. So now give me some range of IP address for my uh, all the six subnets. I want to have six subnets and I also require any future subnets in case uh, my infrastructure expands in future. I need to keep a certain amount of IP address for my future purposes. Now tell me some subnets. One, 
one dot zero slash Uh, sorry, uh, your voice is very faint. Now, when you are trying to understand the subordinate mass, when what to say, 1890, what to say. Before you say that thing, you need to understand, you need to look into how many IP addresses you want inside that subnet. What is the purpose of that subnet? Is it going to be for the front end? Is it going to be back end? Or is it going to be for the database server? How many instances will be inside the servers? And based on that, you need to decide the number of IP addresses you want. And based on this IP address, you need to give the subnet mask. This is not random number. This is the number of IP address that, that you want in this subject. So let's say, just remove this part. If I submit one, I need more than uh, approximately 250 IP address. Sorry, sorry, once again. 256 means uh, 1.24 1.0 slash slash 24 slash 24. Correct. So that will give me approximately 256 IPS. Now for my second submit, this is uh, you know a backend server which is having a lot of uh, congestion, a lot of network. So I require more than thousands IP address, approximately thousand IP address. 2.0 Slash 8 8 8 means complex 16 8 means till 192 you are uh, restricting only 192 you are restricting Slash 16 gives you 65, 17 gives you 32, 18 will give you 16, just keep half, 18 will give you 16, 19 will give you 8, 20 will give you 4, 20 will give you 4, then 21 will give you 2, and 22 will give you 1000. Now if you want to check, uh, what you can do is, Slash 22 calculate and here you can see it will give you approximately 1022 IP range. Correct? Yeah. So I can say here 2 dot uh, slash 22 which will offer me 1022 IP address. Now what will be the subnet string? If I want, uh, let's say. 4000 IP range. Twenty. And what will the IP range? Subnet three, one ninety to one sixty nine. Three dot. How three? Okay, you can use two also. Two dot. How you can use two? See, from two dot zero. Till next 1022 IP address, you have reserved for the subnet 2. And in this 2.0, you are getting only 256. Correct? 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, till 2.255. So 255 plus 255 plus 255 plus 255. That will be approximately 8, uh, 900, 9, or 1000 IP address. Yeah. Okay, 7. 7 dot 7 dot 7 dot 0 okay slash 20 20 all right which will give you approximately 4000 ip address 
now here my condition comes i need to use 0, 0.0 Now, what is the range of submit I can go? Can I use this 0, 0 or not? Uh, already 0, 0 is maybe uh... We have VPC range starting from 0, 0. But our submit okay. range starts 1.0. 1 .0. 0. So I think 0, 0 is still backend. Yes. So how many IP addresses do we actually have in 0, 0 combination? 16. 65k. No, no, no. Not 65. Out of this, yeah. you have already consumed. 256, 1024, and 4000 approximately IP address we have already consumed. In the 0.0, .0 section, how many IP addresses we have left? Now, to understand this part, from 0.0, .0 to 0 0.255, what will happen after 255? It will change to 1.0, correct? Yes. And 1.0 is already here. So, from 0.0, .0 to 1.0, we only have 256 IP range starting from 0, 0 to 0 0.255. Correct? Yes. So, yeah. So we can go maximum with the slash 24. I can also go with 25. I can go with 26. I can go with 27. I can go with 28. Let's say I am going with 28 and it gives me only 16 IP address. Again, here I want to go with 0, 0. I want to again go with 0. So, what will the IP address now? Uh, 17, 0 0.17. 0 0.16. 0 .16. Again, what uh, submit pass I can go? Can I go 16. with uh, 27? Uh, yes. So 27 how much it will give approximately uh, 16 32 it will give you approximately 32 IP address correct yes so now <coughs> we have 7.0 and after 7.0 we have 4000 IP address reserve now I want to go ahead out of this network so where uh, this 4000 will end It will bring 15. 40. 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. 4, 15. Can we go with 16? Yes. 16.0 slash any number of IP address we want. Uh, any number, can you tell me? Let's say again 24. Alright. So 24 means 256 IP. So if you calculate now, 256 plus 1022 plus 4000, approximately I'm taking. Plus 16 plus 256. Plus 256. So it's like approximately we have already only consumed 5582 approximately. But our entire range of VPC is 65,000. Correct? Yes. Out of that, only 5582 we have already consumed. So we have still approximately 59, 59 approximately thousands of IP addresses left. Correct. Now, in this case, we don't need to always distribute the VPC into equal number of amount. Whatever the, your current requirement is, based on that, you can design your system. Whatever the number of IP address is left, you can keep it for the future. Program. 
So let's say we have designed the Krishna picture, one VPC and six subnet. After six months, after one year, you have introduced new features which will require more subnet. So at that time, you can create another subnet, subnet seven, and you can define whatever the range of IP address you want at that time. It's not always mandatory to distribute into a number of IP addresses. All right. Okay. Do you require one more example on this VPC? Because VPC is very important. The entire AWS infrastructure is on VPC. This is the first layer. This is the first step of your infrastructure. Uh, yes, Lalit. All right. Let's take one more VPC. You guys tell me some different uh, apart from 192, some complicated number. Or I will just say how many? 244.329. Sorry, 300 is not possible. 129. Uh, let's say 4.0. So when I say 4.0, what will be my range of IP address for my VPC? Sixteen. Sixteen. Slash sixteen. How it will be possible? If I calculate, let's say, uh, what is uh, two forty four one two forty four dot one twenty nine dot four dot zero, and if I say slash sixteen, that will not be possible. It will conflict to 65,000 more than IP address, uh, less than 64,000 IP address, because our range should start from 0.0. .0. Uh, to further clarify, 4.0 means uh, when we say 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. So that will be full, right? So from till here, we have already consumed. This number of IP address is already consumed for our VPC. We cannot have this number of IP range here. That is like 0 .0, 0 .0, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. .0, .0. This is not possible. Right? You cannot go with slash 16. Already Yeah. Four times. Four times. One zero two eight. One zero two four. One zero two four. Sorry, for the VPC, I'm asking. Now try to understand. We have total 256 on this table where it can start from 0 to 256. So from 0 to 256, 4 is already consumed, which means from 256 minus. Four. That is 252. Now 252 each can have 256 different IP range. That is 4.0, 4.1, 4.255. So if I calculate, it's showing only 64,512 IP address. So we cannot go with 16. We need to go with 17 only. Correct? Yes, sir. So we need, when we say 17, it will give us 32,000 approximately IP address. Now let's see, I need 8 subnet. Subnet 1. I need 8 subnets. So I need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And 
Subject one, how many is one? Uh, let's see, these are two my front end. Submit one and submit two are my front end, which will max require 56 IP range. So slash 17. 56? 256. Four dot zero. Is there any problem with four dot zero? Uh, no, you can do it. Yes, sir. We can also use four dot zero. And here I can say slash twenty four will give me six IP. Now what it means that four dot zero, the entire range is consumed. There is nothing left in four dot part. Four dot series, there is nothing left. So when we talk about the subject two. We must start from five. five. So from five dot zero, now it depends on how many IP address you want. Let's say I need thousand IP address. I can go with twenty-two. Correct? Yes. So when I say twenty-two, which will give me thousand IP address. So my subnet three will now start from nine. Nine or ten. 10 10 uh, you can check it out that part uh, from 10 9 or 10 10 10 dot 0 slash now can you tell me any ip range what about 18 what about 18 18 means 16,000 different IP, IP range you have already consumed, correct? Okay, okay. So now you need to do total 16,000 plus 1000 plus 256, that is approximately 17,000, or you can consider 18,000 you have already consumed. Out of this 32, 18,000 is consumed. Yes. Now submit 4. Uh, 32 minus 18 less to 32 minus 18 that is only 14,000 left. So you need to distribute 14,000 where? Now, before we go ahead, we need to check whether the 60,000 ends in this 10.0 series where the 16,000 end. So, so around 41, it will start. 51, it will start. 51, uh, we have seen at 18. It should start from 63, correct? 10. Yeah, we will start from 10 and it will finish till 63.255. So our next IP range should start from 64. Correct? Yes, yes, correct. Are you getting this? 16,000 yes, yes. IP from 10.0. You need to calculate each every IP address till it reaches to 16,000 different IP range. So approximately, we should we need to start from 64. So 64.0 slash now. 16,000 we have consumed, 17,000 something, 18,000 we have consumed, let's say. Now we left is only 14,000. 
So for fourteen thousand, let's say I want eight thousand IP range in this part. Eight thousand IP. Nineteen. Nineteen. Correct. It will give you approximately eight. So out of fourteen, it is consumed. Now you left only six thousand. Correct. Now where yes. this will end? We need to take this part. HD four, and here it's our nineteen. That is till ninety five. We have consumed. So we we'll start from ninety six. Ninety six dot. Let's say again zero. Now we need to think very carefully. We only left with sixteen uh, six thousand IP range, and still we need to create four different IP subnets. So we need to distribute it in such a way that whatever the our purpose of that subnet is, it should make. Now, are you getting this? How you can distribute a VPC and you can create a VPC and distribute this network into small, small groups? Yes, yes. All right. So I don't think that yes. this is uh, actually required. Now you got an idea. You can try this, right? Okay. Okay. Right. So now moving to our example, we have one ninety two one sixty eight zero dot zero slash sixteen VPC. So what will be the our first subnet? Subnet one. Can I say zero dot zero slash twenty four? Yes, one ninety two one sixty eight zero dot zero slash twenty four. Is it possible? Ah uh, yes, sir. All right. Uh, here also you can see an IP block size must be between slash sixteen to slash twenty eight. That is the minimum and the maximum capacity. You cannot have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, anything, and not beyond the twenty eight. And then I click on create. So my subnet one is created. Now subnet one is created in US East only. Correct. There is nothing public. There is nothing private. We are not aware of what is public and what is private. Let's create few more servers, few more subnets. Subnet two in my VPC, and let's say this time in US East one B. Now this time one ninety two one sixty eight. Can I say one dot zero slash twenty four? Yes. All right. So here, what you need to understand is, we have created two subnets, each with two fifty six IP range. Correct. When you say slash eighteen slash nineteen, the number of IP addresses you get here. When you say slash twenty four. Yeah, you guess two fifty six IP address. But we know on AWS, whenever we create a subnet, AWS detects five IP address for its internal purpose. So technically, you will get here only two fifty one. True. And here you can see available IP is only two fifty one. Out of this two fifty six, five IP address is detected, and you have only two fifty one now. Which is zero dot zero, and second is one dot zero. Now, can you tell me the purpose of creating different subnets in different different availability zone? Because one, the one that we have created subnet one is in US East one A, and second we have created in US East one B. That is inside the North Virginia region, we have created in two different regions, two different availability zones. Just like in Mumbai, we have three availability zones, three data centers, and we are creating a subnet in one of the data centers. Then we are creating second subnet in second data centers and third subnet in third data centers. What is the purpose of it? There is one data center. There is one data center called as Mumbai, and in Mumbai, 
they are three data centers all right and each of the data center is a mirror copy of each other whatever the number of resources hardware available the same exact copy hardware is available in another data center but when we are creating the vpc and we are distributing this vpc into small small groups then why we require a subnet why why we require a ability zone and if we require a ability zone why we are changing the ability zone a part of your data center in data center 1 sorry a part of your servers in data center 1 a part of your resources in data center 2 and a part of your data center in data center 3 why why we are doing this kind of thing why not in a single data center well maybe for load sharing and uh, availability uh, high availability of uh, region wise high availability or something no, all these are in the US East. Even if you consider okay, Mumbai so region, all the data centers are in Mumbai. So there is nothing with the region. Security. Uh, how, Disaster how, security. How, security. <laughs> how security comes into the picture? Hello. Hello. Yeah. How we can do this in the with the security? How how the security is uh, one of the concern when we have multi ability zone? Can we do this? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. This is uh, something like a VPC level uh, uh, high availability or something. Yes, of course. Through this, you can achieve high availability. When you have multiple uh, resources, multiple uh, availability zone, you are actually creating a infrastructure with high availability zone. But the question comes is, when you have a high availability zone, what and how is going to help you? What is the purpose of having a high availability zone or high availability? infrastructure can we do it on an on-premise infrastructure your company has an on-premise infrastructure all right and can you do this high ability part there yeah yes we can do it but uh, the resource consumption will be more expensive will be more yeah. of course and you need to create two different data centers in two different regions right yes Maybe both are in the Hyderabad or maybe both are in the Telangana, wherever you are, your company is situated, but you need to design two different data centers. You need to maintain all these two data, data centers. And when you're talking about having the two different data centers, the cost of creating a data centers and managing the data centers are very huge. And it becomes very difficult. But with AWS and with this cloud computing, it becomes very easy to design the infrastructure in multiple data centers. Now, coming to the point why we should design in such a way to have multi ability zone. The reason is if one of these data centers goes down, then what will happen? All the resources that you have created, all the instances, all the database will again go down definitely. So in that case, the another data center will be keep running, will be up and running to support your application. To understand this, let's say you have 100 EC2 machine for your front end. All right. This 100 EC2 machine you have distributed into two subnets, subnet A and subnet B. Subnet A is in US East 1A and subnet B is in US East 1B. All right. Let's say to your 100 EC2 machine, one of the data centers goes down due to any technical error, due to bandwidth issue, one of the data center is down. So at that time, what will happen? The other 50 EC2 machine, which is in another data center, will be keep up and running and will be help to serve, help your customers to serve. 
in that way you can achieve high ability zone now again i have one small question when you have hundreds of server and out of this hundreds of server only 50 are currently running and supporting to your customer so that definitely the load will be very high correct the load which is on 100 yes. server now the load is on 50 server so how you are going to manage that load because if the load becomes high the server will go again down and there are a lot of things will uh, issues will come so in that case how will you troubleshoot this part split the load sharing across multiple uh, submits yeah of course that we are doing let's say whatever the load is coming uh, let's talk about the netflix application to the Netflix application, millions of users are requesting for the data. And this data is situated into different subnets, into different ability zone. And hundreds of servers are running behind it. Now, out of this 100 server, 50 server goes okay. down to data center problem. So the entire 1 million user request is now going to the 50 servers. Of course, the load is now getting high and the server is not okay. able to handle the then only to public. The how you are going to manage all this part? Are you getting the scenario? Yes, yes. A company, let's say Netflix, is having one million user requests per second. Now this request is going to two different subnet on hundred sub EC2 machine. Now, due to some data center issue, 50 server goes down. One of the data centers goes down, so 50 servers goes down. The entire 1 million users request is sending to the 50 EC2 machine. Of course, the load is high, so the server will again go down. So how you are Absolutely true. With this auto scaling option, once you have enabled that future, it will automatically create few more servers as much as required in the in the in the data center where the data center is working fine so for example if submit a that is data center a is down then it will create resources the number of resources whatever it required in submit 2 that is in data center 2 and it will have hundreds of servers running there to support your application So is it like an automation process? Do you need to worry about the entire thing? If at the midnight, if the entire system goes down, one of the data centers goes down, do you need to do anything? Do you need to wake up and no. do this configuration again and again? This no, is an automatic right. process. Auto scaling is the automatic process. So with this automation, your entire infrastructure will be guaranteed that it is running up and continuously without having any trouble, uh, any error in the system. So in this picture, we come to the ability zone and where the actual auto scaling comes into the picture. All right. So with these two data centers, that is submit uh, 1A and submit 1B in two different ability zone, you can achieve high availability, which is one of the future of AWS. Okay. Now we have two subnets. Let's create. Uh, all right. As of now, we will create uh, only two subnets. Now the next part comes here is the route table. Now we have internet connection. We have subnets. We have VPC. Everything. But this subnet, if you see, is actually connected to a route table. Here it is. This is the route table which automatically comes with the AWS whenever you create a VPC. This is that route table and both the subnets is connected to this route table. So what we'll do is this is the default route table. I will just name it as default so that we can easily identify. Default and I will then name it as public hyphen VPC underscore zero one so this is the default uh, route table of my vpc one and i have just given a name as 
public. Let me just create one more route table. And this time I will say custom. Just for my purpose, I will make as private in my VPC hyphen zero one. In my VPC, VPC zero one. And then I click on create. Now I have two route tables in my VPC for my VPC 01. Here you can see the VPC. It is VPC 01. For my VPC 1, I have two route table. This one is called as main route table. You can see here the main is set to the yes, which is this is the main route table. And this is a custom route table which came automatically, uh, which came when we have created it manually. This route table. I cannot delete. You cannot delete this route table because this is the main route table. And if you see the routes, there is the default route available 192.168.0.0 slash 16, which is called as local route. Remember the local route in our routing table? This is the local route. This is present in the default route table as well as in the custom route table. The one that we have just created is also available in the same. This is something that you cannot delete. You cannot modify. You cannot do anything. Now the purpose of creating two different route table is so that you can define a separate rules to make the public connection public and private connection private. Now we have internet connection. That internet connection we need to connect to the router. So what we'll do is we'll click on we go to the public one. We we'll click on edit route. We'll add a route, and here we'll say 0.0.0.0/0. That is the entire internet, and the target will be internet gateway. And here we'll select internet gateway, and click on save. So now what has happened in our home? The internet wire that is came. Now we have connected the internet wire to our router now whatever the subnets whatever the rooms that are connected to this router will have an internet connection but for our private routable we do not have any internet connection so in that case what we'll do to our public we will do now subnet association and we will select the subnet which we want to make public so here we have two subnets, subnet 01 and subnet 02. What we'll do, we'll make subnet 01 as a public. So I select subnet 01 and click on save. And to my subnet 2, uh, sorry, to my private route table, I will add route and I select the private subnet. So now, the public route table which is connected to the internet gateway here it's called igw this public uh, route table is connected to the internet gateway and it is associated to subnet 01 so now the subnet 01 is a public subnet whereas to our private route table we do not have any internet connection but in our subnet we have one subnet called as subnet 02 that is 192.161.0 so this subnet becomes private so technically if i launch an ec2 machine in one public subnet and private subnet the public subnet will the public ec2 machine will have internet connection and the private ec2 machine will not have internet connection correct am i uh, am i correct guys uh, yes sir okay so I know this is a, a little complicated. Public route table and private route table. The so public route table, what we have in, attached, internet gateway, and then subnets to which we want to make public. And here on this private route table, we will not attach anything. We will just attach a subnet to which we want to make private. 
so that's what we did out of these two subnets now here you can see the subnet 01 if i click on the route table this subnet 01 is connected to the internet gateway which means the subnet is public route public subnet whereas the subnet 2 is not having any internet gateway so that becomes a private subnet so technically now this subnet is a public and another subnet is a private all right test this connection i'm just uh, will create a two ec2 machine in both of the servers uh lalit yes hello one question yes. yeah. Yeah. while you create subnet right it will be directly in the uh, private then why do we need to define it once again okay so basically the uh, whenever you create a subnet it is associated to a main route table right to this main route table but this main route table is connected to the internet so technically both of the subnets are now connected to the internet so both are now public that's why we have created another route table on which we didn't attach anything and explicitly allowed this subnet to have a private communication Did you get that part or should I repeat? Yeah. 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 All right. Yes, sir. All right. So going to the EC2 and I will quickly launch two EC2 machine, one in each subnet. I will not do any configuration, just the default EC2 machine. Just what we need to do is select the VPC here this time. Select the subnet. Do you want a subnet 1 or subnet 2? I will go first with the subnet 01. Do you want public IP? That is, if you want, then you can ever enable. Now, as this is connected to the internet, subnet 01, we will have internet connection. So we can enable this public IP. And keeping everything default, let's just name it in public public instance configure security group i will just quickly add new security group create desktop for public fg ssh open i will also add http to test the connection on the internet and keep everything default review and launch uh, let me check i have a key or not So the key that we have created last time, ISL key pair, uh, click on launch instance. Now, similarly, I will create another in situ machine, but this time in private subnet. Again, T2 micro. And this time selecting the VPC 01. Then subnet 02, which is my private subnet. And in this auto assign public IP, this is now optional. Do you want it public IP or not? As we do not have any internet connection, even if I click on enable, this will make any no sense. This will make no sense because the, it doesn't have internet. So we cannot connect to the internet. So I will just quickly disable this part because the public IP will not serve any help to us. Add storage, add tags, in private instance, and that the one that we have created, I will use the same ATN twenty two port. Review and launch. So, can you quickly tell me the difference between these two EC two machines? Mm -hmm. 
इन्फॉर्मेशन वाइल क्रिएटिंग द प्राइवेट इंस्टीट्यू मशीन we haven't selected the auto assign public ip you can try with auto yeah. assign public ip enable but yeah. that will also not help you because that ec2 machine do not have internet connection so that ip will not be accessible you can try or uh, let wrong so technically every time you have a private instance and you have public instance in your infrastructure and on your public ins- uh, ec2 machine you have public ip which is accessible on the internet and a private ip which is accessible with the infrastructure then you have private machine which do not have any public ip which will ha- only have a private ip so how will you connect to this public instance and private instance to the public instance we can easily do ssh through this public ip can we do ssh in our public instance yes yes but how yes. will do in our private in situ machine on private ip we are talking okay. about uh, accessing it on public or uh, accessing private or through ssh absolutely via ssh so i will show you First, what we will do is we will connect to a public machine. So I will just copy the public IP, and if you have putty, then you can use putty. I have terminal. I will use terminal. Search frequent I and some key pair. Is it to hyphen user at the rate IP? Yes, connect. And we have successfully connected to the EC2 machine or public IP. Correct, public EC2 machine. If I want to check my internet connection, ping. And here you can see I am getting the data, which means uh, the public, uh, the internet is working in my EC2 machine. correct so now even if i want to download any packages or um update then it's showing me all the updates which is available for my system if i say yes download the packages is downloading and it's the packages but what if i want to connect to my private instance of course with this ip address i cannot connect because this is only for the internal infrastructure within the aws so how to connect to a private ec2 machine you have to associate this subnet with private static so you mean to say we need to change the subnet from uh, or we need to associate an internet gateway to a subnet yes but if we do so what is the purpose of having that private instance if we attach this to internet gateway this becomes public then what is the purpose of creating a private ec2 machine am i correct if we have a pub- private ec2 machine but if you are connected to the internet it becomes public then what is the use of creating a private machine we can directly create a public machine now private uh, basically private machines you can keep to some critical uh, servers uh, which is which you do not want to you know expose it to public so only the front end servers you can keep it on the public and the private ips you can keep it on uh, some critical server like database and other things can be hosted on this 
all right let's say this is your database this private ec2 machine is your database how will you connect and how will you configure your database because we need to configure a database first how will you configure a database inside this ec2 machine So what is this local route? If you see the local route, what does it mean? 192.168.0.0/16. It means the entire VPC. Correct. So the entire VPC is having a local route, which means there is a one router, and to this router, there is a LAN connection goes to every computer you have connected inside your VPC, inside your subnets. So without even internet connection, as I described an example in your home, you have two computers and these two computers do not have any internet connection. But if you have connected these two computers via a private LAN, then you can transfer your data easily. Or if these two computers is connected via LAN to a router, then again, you can share your data from one computer to another, correct? Can we do this in our home or in our office wherever you want? Yes. Yes. So what will happen? It will use this private IP to send the data from one system to another system. That's what we need to do. In our public EC2 machine, we have one private IP. And in also private EC2 machine, we have one private IP. So now what we will do? We will do communication from public IP to private IP. That is internal communication between VPC is possible via this local route. And this local route is mandatory to have in all the route tables that you create. You don't, you cannot delete this route table or you cannot de delete this route. You cannot modify this. Are you getting now how to do? Uh, what yes, to do? From yes, public sir. subnet to private subnet. So we have already connected to the public EC2 machine. How we can move to the private machine? What are the things you will require? Of course, the same key pair. What we are trying to do is we are trying to SSH to our private EC2 machine again from our public EC2 machine. Correct? Yes. So our, yeah, so in our public EC2 machine, we need to use the same key pair. So here we need to first create the key. I am creating a file, VI key, whatever the name you want to give. And in this key, I will copy the content of this key pair. And then I will do ch mode 200 key. Uh, hello, guys. Yeah, just a minute. You need to look into this part 192.168.0.201, which is my public machine. 192.168.0.201. But now from this IP, we need to jump to the private machine which is 192.168.1.139. I copy this part and from this public machine, I connect to SSH hyphen I key, whatever the name of your key pair, whatever you have given, then EC2 hyphen user at the rate, the private IP address, not the public IP address, the private IP address and hit enter. Do you want to connect? Yes, I want to connect. And now we are connected to 192.168.1.139 via 0 
for my public EC2 machine, we have connected to the private EC2 machine. So what is the entire scenario? For my local machine, I am connected to the public machine. For my public machine, then I have connected to my private machine. And now if I do the sudo su and check the internet connection, will it, uh, will it have the internet connection or not? Yes. This machine 1.169, which is our private machine, does it will have internet connection or not? Yes. How? You should change to private net, uh, public network. No, no, it's it is connected via public EC2 machine via its internal architecture. But this EC2 machine will still not have any internet gateway or internet. If I'm trying to hit this ping, we are not getting any response from the server. So our EC2 machine is still private, but we have successfully connected to this server. Correct? Yes, sir. So this is the concept of private EC2 machine and public ec2 machine so do you know the Lalit. concept yeah. uh, Lalit, one question yeah. uh, Lalit, uh, where, where did you get that key uh, is that same key you use for the ec2 uh, instance uh, creation or which, which yes key that's for pair. Pair. yeah the key pair yeah. i have one more key pair here and the same key pair the content of the same key pair i have uploaded here okay So now okay. we have two EC2 machines, one is public and one is private. I have connected to the public and from public I have connected to the private. Now have you ever heard of this concept Bastion server or Jumpbox server? Yes, anyone? Have you ever heard of this concept Bastion server or Jumpbox server in your organization in your office? You might have this. Yes, sir. So what is Bastion server? So to connect the AWJ server, we'll use the uh, jumper server. Exactly. So technically now our public EC2 machine is a jumper server, jumbox server. Uh, so uh, just 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 yeah. have a look on the uh, you know at the high level just try to understand we connect to our public EC2 machine and from this public EC2 machine we are connecting to private EC2 machine So technically, this public instance can be now my Bastion server or a Jumbox server, yes. Jumper server, whatever it is. Yes, yes. I always connect to this server and from this server, mm -hmm. I can connect to n number of servers, whatever I want. So it is like a two step of uh, connection. It's like a, again, one layer of security. Correct? Correct. So in this way, you need to design your infrastructure always to have two steps of verification or two steps of layer of security to pass to your private EC2 machine. So you will always have one backup server and with this private EC2 machine, now you can design the entire infrastructure in private mode. Now, previously you had, uh, you shared one thing, one of you that some infrastructure you can put into your public subnet and whatever the critical data is or uh, the database you can put into your private EC2 machine. Right? Someone, one of you have told this part, this thing. So now with this concept, passion to the private instance, can we design the entire infrastructure in private? All the front end, all the back end, all the database, all the different kinds of application you are running 
can we design the entire infrastructure in private subnets? No, no. no. Yes. We can. We can, okay. but uh, that is uh, uh, the security no. is a concern over there. Load balancer can put it in public, support or so on. How security? How security? Private it is. So this is public. You are talking about private. Yeah. Private, right? Yeah, private. Yes, uh, you can put all the servers in private. But web servers, yeah. can If I have, if I have a number of application, if I have seven application in my infrastructure. And that seven application requires, uh, let's say, 400 different EP2 machines. So, can I design the entire infrastructure in private mode? All the 400 EC2 machine is in uh, private mode. Can I design in such a way? Even the front end, even the back end, even the database. You can. Of course, I can design the entire thing into the private mode. And this is one of the best practices and the best feature provided by the AWS. But let me just do one thing. Uh, we have one security group that is Publix HG, which is connected to both the EC2 machine. Let me just create one more security group. Uh, this is a public HG. And here I'm creating one more security group, private HG. In my VPC01. And I'm just creating a blank security group. So this is my private. Okay, so now what I will do configuration is to my public ec2 machine this public edge is connected which will have atn 22 port open to the world but to my private ec2 machine i will change the security group uh, where is the, in the networking change security group and i will select uh, remove the public and i will select the private assign security group. So now this private will not have any kind of open port so what we'll do is we again go to the security group to make it more secure and just private will click an inbound group and say do SSH to the security group of public and click on save. So what is now happening? You have public security group through which 22 port and 80 port is open. And to your private security group, the SSH is only open via this public security group. So can you tell me now, can you connect to my EC2 machine even if you have that key pair? Yes, we can connect. Let, let's say, I, I will create one EC2 machine for you. I will create a public EC2 machine for you. Okay. And I will give you key pair. Okay. Even if you have all these two things, can you now connect to my private EC2 machines? You have one public EC2 machine, you are connected to one of my public EC2 machine. All right. So then I have given you a key pair. And then, I have, uh, and then I have given you key pair to connect to my private machine. So can you connect to that machine? You are asking uh, whether to come on the public EC2 uh, machine and then connect to the private machine? Yes, of course. There is no other way that you can connect to private machine. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can connect. Uh, like, uh, see, once we just connected, we uh, assigned this SSH uh, to the security groups where this SSH is linked with the public machine, EC2 instance, so that if you have the credentials of uh, uh, public, we can assign the private as well. We can, we can access the private as well. 
Okay, so but, few uh, things. We, we need to open the ports also. We need to open the port on the private also, right? This Absolutely. You need to not open the public ports, but you need to always open the private ports. Currently, yeah. this EC2 machine, the private EC2 machine, is only open to the Bastion server. Here you can see this is only open to the Bastion server. So even if I create another EC2 machine with a different security group, you won't be able to connect because here it says 22 port is only allowed from the Bastion security group. No other security group, no other EC2 machine can have communication on this port 22. Correct. So in this way, you have again increased the level of security. Now just consider your infrastructure. You have hundreds of server running in your system. Okay. Now to create to hundred of this server, there is a single endpoint that is passion. So always you need to connect to the passion and from passion you need to connect to the hundreds of different EC2 machine that you want to connect. Now, few things. You can do Bastion server hard, hard, hardening. That is, you can enable two-step of verification that will ask you MFA code that you can put and then only you will be allowed to create a, to enter to the private EC2 machine. Second thing, what you can do to your public security group, currently this 22 port is open to the world. You can restrict this 22 port to only your organization IP address. That is, if a people is connecting via your office, via your organization, then only it is allowed to connect to your passion server. Correct? So in this way, again, a new layer of security is introduced. Are you getting this? Passion server, public and private EC2 machine? In and out, let me know. Uh, no doubt. Uh, okay. Yes. This Bastion server is automatically created once the EC2 instance is uh, uh, is up and running. How how this Bastion server need to be linked with the EC2 instance? That is what you need to do via security group. So for example, Bastion server is not any software. Bastion server is just a concept which is named as a jump box server or jump whatever you say or it's also called as intermediary server the reason why i'm showing you a bastion server is it's more professional name and in exam you will have this name a lot of times in exam there will be different scenario in the scenario there will be word called bastion so at that time you should not get confused what is bastion is it a service or what it is that's why i name is a bastion bastion is nothing but a intermediary server through which you can connect to another server. We haven't installed anything in this part. And to connect to your private machine, you just need to open the security group and you must have the valid EPR. That's all required. Okay, if I want to give the access to the uh, this private uh, uh, instance, what are the credentials I need to share to uh, one, more, uh, one, more, one more client or something like that? Another people wants to access the same private instance. Okay, let's say this is our infrastructure. All right, in my AWS account, you all are you all can log into my AWS account. Fine, we are all are okay. a team and we are connected to my AWS account. I have created one Bastion server and I have one private EC2 machine. Now. To connect to your private machine, uh, let's say you want to update some software packages or you want to update some code. So how will you connect to this private EC2 machine? None. I have created the servers and now you are configuring the servers to update the services or whatever you want. So how will you do that? So I have to log into the bashing server and then uh, log into the private IP to the private instance. Absolutely. So the key pair is already available in the Bastion server. Yeah, so you don't require any other authentication. You don't require any other credentials. I don't need to share you or any other separate credentials uh, to connect to the private EC2 machine. The credential to connect to the private EC2 machine is already available in the Bastion. 
you can use this bashing key to connect to the private EC2 machine. Now okay, let's support. Yeah. We need to have only the uh, key, key value pairs uh, to log into the bashing server to access the uh, private instance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Only that key pair and the name of the private IP. And the private IP of your private EC2 machine. That's all required. Okay. Now let's again uh, let's consider we are a team of six people. All right. I have created resources, but one of you, I don't want to share a credential. I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, one of you person is not allowed to have access to the EC2 machine. One of you is just working on the storage or on the other part of the infrastructure. I don't want to restrict you to have communication on my EC2 machine. How can I do that? I will rename. I will rename the user ID. User ID how? I uh, will give key pair no. Yeah, uh, we will generate yeah, one key pair and we will we'll generate one key pair, private key pair, and we will give it to the uh, like. Uh, for example, A. I want to. Uh, Block A means I'll deny the user ID with name of A. Ah, uh, no. System one, system two, system three. System three is my private. System three is passion, and system C is your system. Every person has a system. Now, what you will do? From your system, uh, try to understand, guys. From your system, you will connect to the Bastion server, and from Bastion server, you will connect to the private server. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we are a group of six people. Out of the six people, I want one of the person to access this Bastion server. If I deny the action to the Bastion server, he won't be able to connect to the private machine. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So how I can restrict this bashing server or how I can restrict this private server. Now, when I say I don't want to have uh, the user is belongs to another infrastructure part, maybe some storage, maybe some database part, then of course he will not require to have access to the EC2. Again, look into high level. Again, the person will not require to connect to the EC2 machine. Correct? Ah, uh, Lalit, they have, they will have IP address. No, we can block deny with the IP address on Bash and server. Yeah. On a security group, we can only allow the rules, not deny. Okay. Lalit, the user ID, uh, where uh, is there any place to associate the I am rule? Uh, yeah. So in this I am policy, what we will do? We will remove, we will not give that person to have EC2 access. So if the person, if you do not have that IAM policy to have EC2 access, you won't be able to connect to Bastion server. You will not able to see how many servers are there. You have no access to the EC2 section. Correct. Now, one of you have asked the question that if I want to share with my client, if a client wants to connect, the same thing you can do. You can whatever the username that the client will have, you can attach the EC2 access. Once you have given the EC2 access, the client will log into the Bastion server. Once the Bastion server is connected, now the Bastion server will contain all the keys to connect to different private EC2 machine. You can connect. You can use one of the key pairs and connect to private machine whatever you want. Simple. Now it's fine. Are you getting this point? Uh, I have a question. Uh, see, uh, yeah. there are uh, multiple uh, private networks with that passing servers. Uh, instances are running. And uh, once you access this EC2 uh, 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 services to the client, and uh, so that he, is, he, can, he can see all the instances which is running in a, in a uh, AWS EC2 instances. Yes. And there you can access all the even key pairs, right? Even for other bashing servers or private networks. 
yes now again what you can do is on this bastion server you can create different kinds of users right in our operating system we can create a users yes guys on our operating system on our computer we can create multiple users user yes, one yes. user get users so that you can yeah. create and share the key okay yeah yeah that 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 works too right yes yes yeah so there are a lot of ways to connect there are a lot of ways through which you can distract but it totally depends on how you do practice the way you think that's really very good the, the number of questions that you are asking the number of uh, different scenarios that you are looking into which is really very nice so when you have this all these things in in pictures and when you are considering all these things it's really very helpful when you try to understand all this part this really will be very helpful to you so now we have one vpc what we have done so far let's just recap we have created one vpc then we have created two different subnets subnet a subnet b then we have created one internet gateway and attached that internet gateway to that vpc correct then we have created a route table and we have defined two different route section one for the public and one for the private on the public route table we have attached the internet gateway and then we have selected the subnet on which we want to make public once which is not connected to any internet gateway is connected to one of the subnet which means this is completely private so we have defined two different subnets one is public one is private correct so once this submit is created once we have defined the rule the one should be public and one should be private then we have created two different ec2 machines and we have seen how we can connect to a private ec2 machine any question end out in this part uh, no really okay so as you can see here, now I'm in my private EC2 machine, 192.168.1.135. And we do not have any internet connection to test our uh, to test our data. Or, or what in short say like if we don't have internet connection, what is the purpose of now this EC2 machine? When we can't configure any server, when we can't configure any database. What is the purpose of having such kind of EC2 machine? And how will you configure this thing? Like uh, how you are going to share the uh, internet connectivity to the virtual machine in the in the PC? No, like, uh, I don't. Fringe, want to, or... No, I don't want to share an internet connection. My only aim is to have the Apache server in my system. Uh, whatever the database I want to do and the, all the configuration all the database all the data that I want to be a part of the EC2 machine I need to upload that data So how I can do that how I can install the Apache server in this thing Without having internet connection Can we do that uh, auto mounting from uh, 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 Public EC2 machine to the private so that there we can install all the software uh, via EFS maybe yeah with this mounting options i think the efs will work so now efs will only help you to share the resources or the share the files across different ec2 machine like the number of files you have but you cannot share the apache servers or something like that it will be very difficult to change the mounting point and share the data again and again What about EMI? Because we know these are the multiple EC2 instances which is going to save, uh, which is going to perform the same purpose. If I, if this is my front end servers, if I have 10 front end server, all this 10 uh, front end server is going to achieve the same thing Apache server and some data. Similarly, I have 10 server for my backend server, which will also require some 
you know uh, any kind of uh, servers or some physical data wh whatever the data we have so can we just create a simple ami that will have all these things while creating of this ec2 machine it will have automatically that future automatically that data and also whenever the new ec2 machine comes up in auto scaling mode it will also have the same data apache server or something like that can we do this just have yeah, a look we can do that so how to do this everything we'll see in our letter section i think it's already our time break and this is going to take a lot of time and through our net concept uh, the concept we have left is network address translation private internet connection this is that part all right yes so when making back um to exit to uh, two o'clock till you all right please guys is a request uh, that you should connect exactly at 2 pm because i am running running out of power as you can see here there are a lot of okay. issues going on with uh, you know uh, natural calamities so there is no power so i will try to you know uh, power up my laptop but please be available by 2 so that we can finish the entire vpc part today yeah, sure love it all right so i will see you sharp at 2 pm all right shall i sh uh, close this session i guess yeah. all right bye bye you at 2 so uh lalit you are going to log into the same session right i uh, know they they will be a different link Uh, I will let Shashank or Shubham to change, uh, give you that link. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Second session is uh, uh, share.